Hi everyone. This time I thought I would try a voiceover and as you can see in the video I am now drawing an eel which is another animal form of the Morgan from Irish myth. So I sketched it out um, using my light table and used a kneaded eraser to make the pencil lines lighter and I'm putting down some light um, color washes just all over the bottom of the painting that's going to be underwater. So I wanted to make that kind of a greenish blue overall and then add more layers on top of it. So some of the eel was coming out of the water so that was going to be a neat effect. I went back and drew some tiny wisps of seagrass or just uh, some sea water plants down at the bottom. I just think it needed more contrast, something not so straight up and down like the reeds were going to be. So now I went back and I'm adding color and darkening in some of the reeds. And this took a long time, so you'll see me skip forward a little bit because I'm just doing lines straight up and down, uh, different ones. And the watercolors naturally tend to have a darker line on the outside of wherever you paint, around the edges. So I was actually using that to my advantage and painting the lines and letting them dry and then going back and painting beside them. And that helped actually give me a line on either side of the reed without actually having to paint a line. So that was really helpful. I'm just doing the spaces in between the clumps of reeds at the moment. It took a lot of precision and a lot of having a steady hand for this, so. <laughs> Alright, so I did skip ahead and I went ahead and did the uh, reeds on the top as well in the same way. Now I'm adding some color to the eel. I added a gray wash and now I'm adding a bluish gray wash to the whole thing that's underwater. So just the parts of the eel that are underwater to kind of add that difference between what's above water and what's below. I had some trouble with the washes, especially on the part that had the eel's face. Um, they didn't come out as flat or as steady as I wanted. And here I'm just adding a little more darkness to give that edge that is the difference between the top and the bottom of the water um, to make more of a contrast there. So I needed to lift some paint um, at the bottom of the lip of the eel. And I tried putting in the gills. I put in the eye here just to maintain where it was, but I end up changing it a lot later. I'm doing the dark strokes in between the background reads, just the shadows that are back there. I'm matching them up to the same shadows that were under the water, so I'm keeping all those lines matched up. It was harder on the top ones because those have the little wispy tops of the reeds that bend over, and it was hard to keep that uh, looking right. skipped forward a little bit because it's just lines over and over. Now I'm putting in a flat wash for the sky. I wanted to put in a sky that was lighter this time. I used a stormy kind of cloudy sky, like almost a gray sky with the uh, red-eared heifer painting. 
So on this one, I wanted to do a blue sky. So I put that in and I'm painting right over where I'm gonna paint uh, like a dead tree branch coming up later. So I'm lifting a lot of paint along the edge and I'm putting down white paint because it got way too dark on the underneath side. I'm also using the white to make the eye bigger than it was before and I'm drying that. I had to put several layers of the white down because unfortunately I couldn't lift enough paper to get it um, light enough there so I had to use the white. Adding some scars to the eel. When I looked at reference photos a lot of them had scars I guess from either fighting each other or maybe getting caught by a fisherman or something like that but a lot of them had scars on them. And I'm darkening some edges, blending those out. It took several times going back over those places to get them the way I wanted. I'm darkening the top and blending that out, giving some contrast. darkened the front of the nose. It looks a lot darker now, but when it dries, it gets a little bit lighter. Adding a few more scars. I went in with the white, and then I go back in later with the darker tone and add like a shadow to the scar to give it some depth. because those are important to have. I've blended those out a little bit. And now I went in with like a very light brown wash and just kind of spotted it all over the top. Um, and I go back later with a green wash on top of that because I didn't want him to be completely sleek and uniform. I wanted it to seem like he'd been in the water and um, maybe even deposited some colors onto him or the top of the water was making some shadows. I went back and added a few clouds. Um, I went over it lightly with the white um, just to give it some area but I ended up having to go back over it with white ink afterwards. It's a watercolor ink. It's a water soluble ink that I use so it's technically white watercolor but it's a lot thicker than the white watercolor that's in that palette. So here I put in the crow and the dead tree branch. I wasn't happy with the way it was sticking out of the very back background. It almost looked like it was floating so I painted it down into the reeds a little bit. That looked a lot better. I went back with that watercolor white um, that I have. It's almost a watercolor ink. Um, and I went back and put the shine on top of the water, the little ripples where the water is bumping up against the reeds. And I also put the highlights back on the clouds. So those show up a little better. Turn the painting upside down. I have to twist it a little bit, but I'm trying to do all watercolor around the edges this time. And it is very challenging with those little bitty bits that stick out of the oval. If I didn't have those, it'd be a lot easier, but I like those elements that kind of break that border. So I came in with a really dark bluish gray. It's more blue than gray. And then when I get towards the reeds that stick out near the bottom here, it gets a lot more difficult to control the water, to control the color. But I did get it going. I did have a few issues. I ended up making it a bit more 
bit less of a flat wash and more of a um, mix of colors and textures gave it some texture um, and that seemed to work a lot better it's almost like a swirling whirlpool of water by the end of it it a little darker and I do have it tilted actually to help with doing the wash I added some like almost like a phthalo green type color that's not what it's called in my palette but it was a nice like sea green color and then at last I went around the border with a thick line of, it's a bronze metallic watercolor paint um, but it's almost like a it's a reddish gold. It's not a true bronze, but it's more of a reddish gold. And that went around the edges, just like in the heifer painting. The heifer painting was more of a yellow gold, but I liked the effect of this reddish gold, the rose gold, with the eel and all the blues. And there we have it. So please subscribe for more content like this. And I'm over on Instagram and Twitter under phalicon.lay. And I hope to see you there as well.